Cardi there, 315, 321, it's all good. Um, we are here. We said we'd uh, do an afternoon. Uh, uh, I guess the final one for the week would be the uh, last gas bastion of analysis or particular trade strategies uh, for the earnings. So let's get into them. We've already posted in the main room uh, a few ideas. First off, we'll go through. Um, we've got Marvell. And um, this is, let's see, tomorrow, the last day of the month. So we've got a couple things just to real, before we get into the, the suggested di directional trade setups yesterday's, I mean, uh, everything hit. So uh, I don't know if you want to, we should be pressing our luck, but let's just continue to do what we do. And uh, when I say everything hit, it was calling for Hewlett Packard to go up, calling for CRM to go down. Okta was one that did work, but then didn't, didn't at the end of the day. AI just blew it out to the upside. Best Buy blew it out to the upside. Um, by the way, here's a 13% move, which we also had Best Buy as a, not just an option strategy, but we have it in the newsletter as well. Um, I'm actually surprised I didn't cover Dollar General, but I thought it would do pretty well in this environment. Dollar General's not doing well. Target's not doing well, um, or it did not do well. Let's put it to you that way. And that leads us to Costco. So Costco, as um, we were bullish last year, um, I've been bullish. I can't sell this stock except for today. Um, I, I'm thinking the consumer's demand and the what was strong might give it up a little bit uh, that that has worked for some names not Nvidia of course but it's worked for some names and with the with Costco I'm just gonna say from a technical perspective the implied move is thirty six dollars for this stock um, and the technical condition when I say I posted in the room that the um, I posted the room and I'll read the quotes. I said, uh, recent daily and 60 minute volume trends are negative. Okay, so the market's rallied. Here's my volume momentum indicator. And as you can see, the momentum has been weakening as the price has been going higher. So since approximately uh, May, uh, let's see, the last biggest volume reading would, would have been the 17th. We came into that Monday uh, and we keep, changing the momentum, the negative momentum. So therefore, some some from probably 794 to 820, it looks like it's been going higher and on, on relative good strength. The relative strength itself, the PMC, has done well. And, and so I just wanted to make sure that we're kind of looking at this in, in um, both contents of relative strength and volume. But when I look at the OBV and I look at a new high in a market taking out a preceding swing high, and this was the high in March, and nobody wants to buy it because if they loved it in March, I mean, honestly, it's 780, and months go by, and the economy and inflation, and you're considering what do they sell? They sell both gasoline, pharmaceutical, drugs, uh, hearing aids, glasses. They cover every aspect of your life. Um, the question is, I don't think they're going to lose memberships. And yes, their membership uh, fee increased marginally, but I don't think people are buying the vacations. I don't think people are buying uh, and spending as much. And we saw that via the beige book. So I would have to say from the Fed's beige book, which said, hey, consumer spending is slowing. I think big ticket items, definitely people, I, I don't know if they're buying brand new and replacing their air conditioning systems. Because as you walk in a uh, a Costco, they have all these peripheral sales, window treatments, uh, air conditioning services, all kinds of uh, different things um, that Costco offers members for discounts. And I get that. Uh, I believe they have now health insurance. And, and, and if people are working, they get maybe that at their own job. So I, I, I don't know how much of their sales is already baked into this right now. But I can say that the volume reading on this last 20, 40, $30 rally has not been fantastic. In fact, it is under a, a bearish divergence pattern. 
Um, when I look at the 60 minute, I just wanted to define what I stated. Um, the rally uh, from uh, the other day we had on uh, May 24th pulled back and rallied. And today's high is greater than the preceding high. On balance volume is in a divergence. But what's more spooky is my volume indicator has been in a divergence since the last swing high at 786. So it broke out of an old high. And rather than confirming that high with strong volume, the volume's been tapering off. So it, it, it's vulnerable. It's vulnerable for a sell-off. And if, if it does sell off, I mean, would it shock anyone that it would get back to where it was May, the middle of May, two weeks ago, where the volume was probably the strongest, right? Or at least the last swing high area, which is 780 into that, that region right there, retest the point of breakout. And in my humble opinion, I think that's probably adequate. Am I happy about getting bearish on uh, Costco? No, but I think that if it does miss or if guidance comes out uh, a little weaker, um, I would have to say, can the market get back to that 786? And the answer would be probably yes or a little bit lower. 785, 772 and a half bear put spreads for two and a cup, $2.25 would work. And uh, I would have to say, it's expensive. This week, we had a good slew of winning trades all week. And I mean, you can, you can walk away and, and say, listen, John, you, you know, you, you hit the ball out of the park with a lot of stuff. Um, you know, two and a quarter for a, um, uh, a, a 12 wide, 12 and a half dollar wide is, is you know, I, it, it's Costco. I, you could take a pass on it. But needless to say, I think it just, it, you know, for a $36 uh implied move it's within the realm of reality and if there is a surprise it's probably going to exceed that and and costco's price to earning ratio is 53 according to uh thinkorswim so 53 times forward earnings is a little costly up here uh, if if in fact they get if they if they do get a miss uh and i think one of the misses that's going to be important is um subscriber uh, if if they saw if they retained and didn't grow subscribers, that might I don't know that might be considered a miss. Uh, I do not see people doing anything other than buying uh, a lot of groceries. I've been to Costco. I'm a member. Uh, you know I don't go as frequently as I used to, only because the you know it's a little bit further from where we moved, and um, you know it's, my needs are a little bit less than they they once were, I guess. Uh, so I don't. I don't, I'm bought, maybe I'm a consumer that's bought out, but needless to say, I don't need the air tire inflator, a, a generator, a power washer, or anything else. Like, wow, look at that. That looks cool. I didn't have one of those as a kid. Let me buy that now. What do you need it for? Um, you know, then you got to put stuff in the in the car, and then you got to unload the car, and then you got to unbox it. And it's like, Ugh. I don't buy things to buy things anymore. And I think a lot of consumers are the same way. So um, I, I just, I just think that this this PE is pretty expensive. The volume there is is a a, a warning sign, and uh, that's a, you know it's hard to say in tough times can you ever expect Costco to go down, and and that's you know it, that's the problem with with buying puts out of the money on Costco. Let's go to Z Scaler ZS um, in Z Scaler. I also uh, pointed out this is in the. Um, the implied move $17. It's already down six bucks right now, almost seven. Uh, the price to earnings ratio is a negative 165. This was one that was pumped by CNBC and every Tom, Dick, and Harry, and it was really had a great lot of great things going for it in cloud storage. But cloud storage, whether it's Amazon, uh, which has cloud storage, whether it's crowd, uh, let's see, uh, my crowd storage, cloud storage, um, cloud fair, uh, Okta's earnings today didn't do well. Snowflake, Datadog, Fortinet, Fastly, Box, Amazon. I mean, they're all negative. This is a really bad sector, and the, and, and the relative strength is negative in the entire space. So when I said that the entire space is getting its teeth kicked in, um, that's probably um, a, an understatement. And so Zscaler at 157, you know, if it opens lower tomorrow, I'd rather be a buyer. And I think that's what I said. I'd rather be a buyer on a lower open because, I mean, from 259 to, I don't know, support over in, in this general region of 150, I, I just don't think I, 
I just don't, it's, I don't know what to say about this. I mean, technically it's got pivot support at 150. Um, the volume's down, but the stock's down. The uh, relative strength's weaker, but not as it was. The PMC, and I'll expand this chart for you. How I read this is simple. The market relative to the S&P is weak. Relative to its previous low back on April 19th, it's not as weak, or even in fact going all the way back to the overstretched March 20th low. So it's coming into a value, whether it's exactly 150, whether it's 147, somewhere old highs, old lows, somewhere in that vicinity, whether it's 135 to 145, I don't know, somewhere in there, I'd rather be a buyer on an overreaction uh, on an earnings. So maybe in the extended hour, if they punish the dickens out of this thing and get it way down, I, I'd be more inclined to be a buyer rather than uh, buying puts or getting long ahead of the earnings. And that's what I see for Zscaler. Uh, gap. Let's talk about Gap, the Gap. Old Navy uh, closed a bunch of stores. Um, retail, Amber Crombie and Fitch off the charts. American Eagle Outfitters. Uh, Ralph Lauren. I mean, it's hit or miss with consumers. Here's Ralph Lauren and American uh, Amber Crombie and Fitch, A&F, excuse me, has also been off the charts. Is Gap attractive to retail consumers? I mean, they bought, uh, they have Old Navy. Um, and I can't remember the other store uh, that they, uh, I believe, took out. They had kind of like a safari theme to it. But um, more importantly, Baby Gap, Little Gap, Big Gap, store closes, uh, store closures are extraordinaire. Um, they've tried to develop more of an online. I got, you know, maybe they got some type of, um, uh, of, following and trend setting the long-term volume looks pretty good the near-term volume doesn't look great the on balance volume has been kind of zigging and zagging um the bullish convergence pattern captures my attention let's talk about that the market made a low it's tested the low and you can clearly see when it gets down into this zone people have been buying at 20 bucks um if there was ever a time and, you know, we could take into the macro sense about China's this and China that and uh, store closures and, and China's economy is weak. And they they expanded their uh, store and presence in China, too, by the way. And I mean, I don't buy Gap stuff and I don't go shopping in Old Navy, but that doesn't mean others don't. Um, but what this chart tells me is it's got potential to rock to the upside. It also, it, it doesn't have that excessive volume where the market rallied and it's got excessive volume where everyone bought in and then if bad news comes, everyone gets out like it did up in here. Um, it's starting to show like gradual increases, but my volume indicator, I can't ignore that bullish convergence pattern. So therefore I said, you know what? Banana Republic, thank you, Bonnie. I knew you had my back. You always cover my back. Thank you very much for that. It, Banana Republic, I believe, is under the Gap's umbrella. Um, so looking at uh, the at Gap, I, I don't know. It's a gamble trade. I'm tired this week. We covered a lot of stuff in the room um, and uh, with newsletter positions and trades and earnings. And, and, and I mean, is Gap going to make my week? Probably not. But, if, you know, just in case the stock wanted to get back up, to where it once was at $28, $27. I mean, uh, when I posted it in the room at 228 this afternoon, gap implied move is $2.80. So, all right, go three bucks. So that's at 25 and change. All right, um, the PE already on this stock is 16 and a half. The, um, did they downsize appropriately? Did they get rid of in past years the dead weight. I think they had numerous about of, of uh, store closures, uh, store closures. And if I'm not mistaken, this company started with an ex. Uh, I don't know if it was an employee or president of Levi Strauss and another guy. And I think it started in California. And it's funny because going to San Francisco at the Money Show many many years ago, their their flagship store was right there near Fishman's Wharf. And it was dead. I mean, there were 
thousands of people walking on Fisherman's Wharf and people going in, they shop and they're going in and out. And, and the Gap, which was right on the, like a corner of the street there, huge building, dead, nobody in it. I don't know, maybe things have changed in recent years. And like I said, that was probably a decade ago. I just remember that. But in this case, I think maybe um, for the Gap, you could, you know, if they can, if you want to make a small bet that they can pull a rabbit out of the hat and, and say, yeah, are we, we are, are, our brands, we have loyal uh, clients and, and people have uh, increased in casual wear, then go with the June 7th, not the expiration tomorrow. Um, you know, if you wanted to gamble, you could go, I guess, with a 26 deep out of the money, flip a coin for 25 cents. But I think a 24, 27 and a half bull call spread paying 68 cents, it might be worth the test of the upside move. Um, and that's what I posted in the room. I just wanted to share that again. Um, Marvell, M-R-V-L, last but not least, in the semiconductor. Um, NVIDIA had a heck of a week. A lot of stocks had a heck of a week. This Marvell has an implied move of about nine, 10%, $7 move. I don't have any significant indicator readings. Um, as you can see, the market rallied. Uh, the relative strength improved. On balance volume's up, my volume indicator's up. So that's, okay, that's great. A $7 move though. Um, I mean, that puts you back to 85. Is it gonna do that in the uh, night session or the extended hours and then fail? Um, the weekly volume, I mean, one indicator with OBV is detrending. My volume indicator shows still negative momentum, but getting less bad is one way of reading it. Um, it it's, it's a, I don't know, it's, it's, the 60 minute volume, it looks a little peakish to me. Um, let's double check. So it, it, it just, I mean, there's a gap up there. It, it didn't, it, it could have rallied with, with NVIDIA's earnings. It didn't um, relative to NVIDIA. And here's the thing. Um, it's, it's got pretty, in my humble opinion, it's got good odds of getting slammed on disappointment. Um, and it could exceed 10%. And based on, and I, I based that on what happened with uh, Salesforce, CRM. Uh, Salesforce, everybody was in it. Everyone loved it. The stock's only down 20%. Oops. I mean, 20%. This is such a widely held institutional name, Salesforce. I mean, they invest in, as I said yesterday or two days ago, uh, with all their commercials with Matthew McConaughey and, the, you know, the AI to, for a stock like this, can you imagine Apple being down overnight 20%? I mean, this is not quite Apple, of, of, of course, but I mean, in the software application, anything goes in this market. And um, what I bring that to your attention because what does Marvell do? It serves cloud based customers, and that sector is cloud based sector. And I mean, CRM, Salesforce, is kind of does cloud storage, right? And data processing. Um, that space is absolutely beat up. So if Cloudflare is not making money, are they buying more Marvell chips because their stock has been going down? And you look at uh, Snowflake and Datadog, and you know it's relevant. So again, my my two cents here is maybe do for a uh, a trade, maybe do the seventy two sixty seven bear put spread for ninety seven cents. And again, it's a coin toss. We, you know, I, I, I put out, I think I, we counted up this morning, 17 trades in the last week and a half on options and earnings, up, down, sideways, left and right. And then a couple of uh, little numb nut trades like uh, Whirlpool, WHR and Snowflake. Um, I don't think there was one other that didn't pan out, but look at Whirlpool starting to, again, uh, thanks to Best Buy, pop a little bit, uh, wash and rinse. Uh, people are buying uh, um, appliances. One of the interesting things that I wanted to bring back to your attention on Whirlpool is at the end of the day, this is such a minor, minute, uh, minuscule, hard to see, and we need to expand it, doji. This is a uh, kind of like a, a dump and a pump type of mini pattern. Now, because of the, um, the, the swing low at 84 and the close up here at 89, it's $5.00 the odds are over the next seven to eight to 10 days, we're going to get at least a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio, $5 move, which coincidentally fills the gap up there at left. Relative strengths kind of improved. 
and uh, the volume's one day wonder, it's getting a little better. So therefore we might see it, you know, maybe tomorrow or after we get through the weekend, a bigger recovery or at least some kind of a, you know, short covering rally you would expect out of Whirlpool. If everyone's buying houses, they should be putting an appliance in it. They're not buying LGs only or GE profiles. They're buying or Wolf or Viking. So Whirlpool does make a couple products out there. Um, the other one that I thought was interesting that because of Foot Locker and no one's giving this nobody, and I don't mean, I mean, nobody's giving this any respect. I mean, it's not even getting respect. It's as if it's a dead market, Nike. And Nike does form a little PPS buy signal. It's, I don't know how many days in a row it does this. It rallies and then in the final minutes, it drops. It rallies, it drops. It's not, it'll be the first time it's been able to maybe close greater than a doji. And the gray line is what we call a last conditional change. But because it's, you know, where's your volume giving me the like excitement here? If this was kind of like a bigger trade that we're going to sink our teeth into with a high closed doji, I'd want major volume bars. This looks like nobody's really cares. So I don't think that this is a high quality signal because it's on minuscule, minute volume. And so we'll probably have to wait on that one. Um, and maybe because we've got, uh, other reports like the unemployment report out next week. And most importantly, Friday, we get the PCE core inflation data. So that's the the the, the big trade ideas for this uh, last uh, earnings event for the month of May. Time has flown and gone straight by. And in fact, we're coming up to, I mean, June, we're going to have brand new signals, which I know that you guys will want to, I definitely, inquiring minds want to know, what are our what what new signals will be generated on a monthly basis? Do we have new sell signals, new buy signals? What's generating uh, some excitement around the board? This is a small little biotech company called Biogen. It's on the cusp of forming a monthly high closed OG Biogen. And what's interesting about that is that in the month of June, one of the strongest sectors or one sector that gets that has seasonal strength is one of the sectors that's the worst of all, drugs and biotech. And so it, maybe this is a, a, a turning month or a dead cat bounce month for some long opportunities. Biogen, by the way, we picked it up from the newsletter here uh, on that dip near the monthly pivot support and today generates a PPS buy signal. But it's also going to generate a monthly buy signal when seasonality takes over. So June's going to be interesting. And uh, matter of fact, we are like just tick tock, tick tock. The time is going by. Our three week option class begins in two weeks. I thought it was a month from now. Um, it's it's the uh, my I, I I don't know a lot of people have been asking for like where do I price in options and how do I get my unusual volume activity and why do I choose between an unbalanced butterfly and how do I uh, choose certain strategies over others. And first, if you know, you, you look for an opportunity and I use my scanning and I use my radar screen and then I go and I look at options and then then I look at what the best, I guess we want to call it money in, money out of where I find a, a better uh, opportunity risk reward wise. So those are where I would come up with a difference between maybe we do an outright option call or maybe we do um you know some type of a different strategy to reduce our cost basis and that's what this three-week option class is all about starting on june 12th so again a lot of uh great things coming up in the month of june uh unemployment report is uh national donut day again it's it's usually the first day of june and uh the first day of june will be next friday but the first trading day of june will be monday monday anyway a lot of stuff going on in June. Father's Day is in June. Uh, and the most important, the option, the three-week option class. And if you wanted more information on that, certainly visit the website, uh, PersonsPlanet.com. Uh, you know, some of you guys were asking about it, but uh, and did sign up for it. So I'm excited to see you guys. If you signed up, just say, yeah, I signed up for this. Um, but there it is, the upcoming event. It's the online training class starting June 12th and the next week, the 19th, and then finally the 26th. So 
Uh, this can be found right here at PersonsPlanet.com. Uh, I guess you just go real simple. Go to PersonsPlanet.com and then go to seminars. And then you can read all about the seminar, the online class there. Anyway, thanks again for listening, everybody. We've got uh, the market uh, as we entered this week, just to leave you with one final note, IYT, remember this big uh, thing we were talking about, the transports leading things down? Bingo. Now we're down. Uh, the SPY trading now at 522, grudgingly near that 520 handle. Maybe we get some bad news uh, on earnings tonight. Maybe Costco weighs in. I mean, how much worse can it get? I can tell you how much worse it can get, and we talked about it today too. MSFT, Microsoft. Microsoft could come down and fill a teeny little gap at around 400 bucks, and the odds of that happening are, are getting pretty close to uh, reality because uh, today it was down $10 when we were discussing it, and now Microsoft is down 13 So I, I, my two cents is a move back, a quick uh, flop, uh, and then pop, I, I'm still more of a fan longer term of Microsoft, but it is a profit taking uh, mega cap correction mode. And that's what we see. And it started with technology in the NASDAQ composite with our little MA breakdown in the AD comp lines. You can clearly see now the Qs have a yellow line crossing under blue with a daily PPS. There's a, you know, a 430 gap to be filled. If Microsoft gets to 400, if Apple pulls back to like maybe 180, then the Q's definitely from its cap weight uh, can see uh, of that gap fill. The Russell on the other side of the coin though, uh, I just think you're seeing a rotation. It's hard to define, but I think that rotation is coming out of some of the mega cap stuff into some other names and uh, getting into the Russell. The Russell went from overbought on the MIC oscillator to oversold. Um, and the volume never really wasn't, didn't amount a whole lot. So I think possibly we got just a, a rotational grind in the market. And uh, today you're starting to see that unravel with Microsoft all in one day down $13. Thanks a lot, everybody. I will see you in the live trading room tomorrow for sure. And uh, good luck with earnings tonight. Thank